Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today on episode 5 of how to get better at World of Warships we're going to talk about three relatively important concepts that is pushing, defending a push or kiting, and finally the ability to know when and how to disengage from certain fights and to expose that relatively vulnerable broadside. Furthermore, in terms of mechanics, there is one extra thing that I'm going to cover, uh, which is going to be effective armor thickness. Please do keep in mind, before watching this particular video, please go watch episode 4 of How to Get Better at World Warships so you have an understanding of what overmatch and auto bounce is, because that is also really, really important. So let's kind of get into it. If you take a look at a standard game that you play in World of Warships, you typically, if you want to break it down to some really basic fundamentals, the game is essentially a game of a push, a defense of a push, and then on another flank, it'll be another push and a defense of a push. Whichever side sort of wins that push or defense will have an advantage because then their side is going to be able to basically pincer the remaining flank and possibly win the game. Now, this particular video does focus a little bit more on battleships as battleships do have actual effective armor. But remember, in a typical game, a battleship by itself is never able to hold a position by itself or push a position by itself because a battleship cannot survive without vision and also it cannot really do things without the DPM of cruisers. And you'll see very, very soon why that is the case. So vision is going to be key and also DPM from supporting ships is going to be the key. The battleship can do good damage, but if it runs into a situation where the opponent also knows what they're doing and you are trying to do the absolute best as well, it ends up being a bit of a stalemate. You need your supporting ships to do things. But still, without a battleship, pushes are really, really hard. Ever have a flank where you expect like you know two cruisers and a destroyer to push a flank against the battleship? Really hard to do, especially if that battleship has support. If it doesn't, then there's still ways to play it. On the other hand, you know, if you're expecting, you know, like let's say two cruisers and a destroyer to hold a push without a battleship there to anchor the flank, it is also incredibly difficult unless the opponent does not have a working battleship either. So all these things, you know, is kind of a big picture thing, but specifically we're going to talk about, you know, the battleship and its armor and how it can be used sort of to influence the battle. Today's example, we're going to be using a Vladivostok uh, and an Amagi as well, although the Amagi is not going to be captained by me, it'll be captained by a friend, FTHP, who is going to be demonstrating certain things as well. And I'm going to show you the Vladivostok's uh, capabilities. Now, Vladivostok in-game, if you look at the armor viewer, there's a couple of things that are notable. Notably, the Citadel, which is very much above the water. So Vladivostok, if it goes like sort of full broadside, and it takes a shot in here, assuming that the enemy ship has enough penetration, you will get very easily citadeled and get really, really hurt. However, Vladivostok has a number of ways to protect itself, both offensively and defensively. One of those is, of course, to utilize the things that we talked about in episode four, notably that of the auto bounce mechanic, right? So you could go kind of really angled here with the 32 millimeter bow and you're pretty darn safe. But if you do this, one of the problems is you lose 33% of your firepower. So a better way to do it is to first study what kind of gun arcs you have on the Vladivostok and then angle yourself so that you can bring all of your guns to bear. And then you utilize a combination of auto bounce because, you know, these thicker armor plates are still going to be auto bounce surfaces. And then also utilizing effective thickness in order to shatter shells and not let them penetrate your citadel. So let's take a look at it on a more sort of technical level, just to show you the effect of angling on armor. So this is the Vladivostok's 370 millimeter main armor belt, and we're going to start at 45 degrees, 46 there, but 45, because 45 degrees, there's no auto bounce chance yet. But you can see that the effective armor is like 500 plus millimeters, even though the belt itself is 370. As you keep going into that, you know, auto bounce chance range between 45 and 60 degrees for the majority of battleship shells, the effective armor keeps going up. So by the time you get to approximately, let's say here, about 36, 37, oops, let's see here, about 35 degrees, here we go, which is also 55 degrees inside of that auto bounce 45 to 60 range, you notice that you have like 600 plus millimeters worth of protection. If you get to 31, which is right before the 100% auto bounce chance at 60 degrees starts, 718 millimeters of effective armor. So for a shell that is passing the auto bounce check, it needs to have that much penetration in order to get through into your citadel. 
So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you take a look at the turret arcs of the ship, uh, this data is coming from a website called Game Models 3D, which unfortunately does require a very small payment in order to use. But so let's take a look at the Vladivostok and you notice that on the left I have the angle required to get all three turrets out to the front. You notice there's a 35 degree angle required. To the rear, uh, it's listed at 149, but if you do the actual math, it's 31 degrees in order to bring all three guns out into the action. Now, if the things from episode four and what I talked about earlier in this video start to make sense, 31 degrees, of course, is a very high auto bounce chance surface. And also the effective armor is like 700 plus millimeters. So in a 31 degree sort of position, you can hold that position, stay in that kind of angled manner, bring all of your guns into the action, and you're going to be a very, very hard nut to crack. However, when you are trying to push into the opponent, you'll notice that your forward arcs are not as good. And 35 degrees, you have a little bit less auto bounce chance. Your effective armor is going to be a little bit less as well. So in that kind of situation, if you're trying to hold an offensive sort of pushing in kind of posture, you're probably going to have to be a little bit further back. So you kind of do need to go on ProShips.ru, for example, look at a penetration curve and see what kinds of penetration you're looking at at that particular tier. So how I normally do it is I go on the website, look at all the ships of, let's say, tier 8, and go, okay, which ship has the highest penetration and where is my danger zone? Then I will look at tier 9 and you know do the exact same thing. So I'm going to give an example right now, which is, let's say, a Magi. And if you look at a Magi's penetration and you look at the angles that I'm going to be playing at, you kind of feel like, all right, around 10 kilometers, if I'm angled to this kind of manner, the Amagi shouldn't really have enough penetration to be going through my main armor belt and in order to get sort of citadels when I'm sitting in that kind of position. So here I am as a Vladivostok playing offense, right? So you'll notice that my bow is towards the opponent. And the reason why this is the offensive position is because, hey, if the opportunity presents itself to push immediately, I don't have to turn my ship around. I can just press forward, turn a little bit to the left, and boom, I'm going forward. You can see the position that I'm in. I'm angled at that 35, 36 degree angle. I've got all of my guns out onto the target and I can shoot enemy targets, right? But any return fire I get is going to have to go through that very, very thick effective armor. Auto bounce will work sometimes, but that effective armor is gonna reduce the chances of me taking any kind of citadel from the Samagi. The Samagi, however, is also doing the exact same thing, except on a defensive nature. Now, if you take a look at Amagi's gun arcs, which I'll show you in a little bit, Amagi's gun arcs to the rear are very, very good, but to the front, not so much. So Amagi, for example, is a battleship that does very, very well sitting in a position like this and holding a defensive stance. It's not so good on offense. You'll actually see later on what happens when an Amagi tries to play offense against a Vladivostok that's playing very, very good defense, and it doesn't usually go very well for the Amagi. But as you can see, we're just trading shots, trading shots, and there's no devastating salvos. Yeah, we're still going to get the penetration damage when we hit the upper belt and penetrate or the superstructure, but we're not seeing those huge citadel, you know, devastating strikes. And this way, as a battleship on offense, I can slowly help my team push in. This is also why you need your destroyers and your cruisers to work, because without the DPM from the cruisers and the fires and everything and the potential torpedoes, you know, a battleship like this can just stay here for a very long period of time. With heals, with all that, it can just stay there, right? Very, very strong staying power. However, you'll notice that by doing this, you know, I'm always the threat while playing offense. For the Amagi, of course, by being there, it's not easy to push into it either. See it? So it kind of plays both roles depending on how effectively you utilize the angling. Now, before we get into the next step, let's take a look at Amagi's gun arcs first. And on paper, they actually do look sort of similar. The Amagi's forward arcs requires 37 degrees in order to bring out all five turrets. And on the rear, in order to bring out all five turrets, you need to be at 36 degree angle. Now, I know it's written as 144, but you basically go 180 minus 144. You get, anyways, you get the angles. So on paper, they don't look all that different. However, Think about the practical application. When the Amagi is playing defense, like it was in the earlier clip, it can stay sort of still, it can angle perfectly, and it doesn't have to move or anything like that. However, when you are actually trying to push into the opponent, you have to sail forward, right? And as you're swinging out your ship, you get all of your guns in, you fire, and then you'd have to reverse your rudder and then try to turn your ship back. That amount of time, there's a very good chance you'll expose a little bit more side and you will get very easily uh, retaliated against for big chunks of damage. So let's take a look at this in action between a Vladivostok and a Magi. This time the Vladivostok playing defense, a Magi playing offense. 
So on defense, as of a lot of Vostok, remember the angle that I can be at, roughly 31 degrees. Tons of effective belt armor, very, very good auto bounce chance, and Amagi's really going to struggle here, especially with the Amagi's arcs. So you can see that the Amagi is going to try. In order to get all of its guns into action, it needs to sort of show its side a little bit more and get all of its guns into action. As a Vladivostok, I can just stay as angled as possible, and I can make some small movements to the front, small movements to adjust myself and to adjust my angle. But every single time the Amagi is going to make this turn in order to get all of its guns out, I'm going to be able to get very good damage off of it. And you can watch this salvo going in. Amagi's got the rear guns off, but I'm taking 16, 17,000 damage off of the Amagi for that one turn. The Amagi cannot, of course, continue broadside because I will hit it again, all the while staying in this angled position with all of my guns out and getting damage. So the Amagi has to return to angle again, and then every single time the Amagi makes the mistake of you know, sort of angling out just a little bit too much to get all of its guns into action, I can get damage off of it. So in this kind of situation, Amagi is just not favored, right? Amagi is far better doing the previous task, which is staying there with all of its guns out, holding those positions. There are a number of ships in the game that do certain things really, really well and some other things not so well. One of the great sort of contradictions of the envisioned role is actually the Friedrich the Grossa. If you take a look at the tier 9 German battleship, you're going to say, man, this ship sucks. If, like, if you've ever played her, you're going to be like, oh, it sucks. And a lot of people go, well, the reason she sucks is because, you know, her guns are terrible. They, they are, have horrible dispersion. You can't hit anything. But if you actually really look at what makes the FDG problematic, look at its gun arcs. The Frederick the Grossa has absolute garbage forward gun arcs, which for a battleship that is meant to push, it doesn't do it very well, because every time it needs to get all of its main guns into the fight, it basically has to show you enough side for you to be able to clap it for like 20,000 damage in penetration. Very similar to the way the Amagi has to, in fact the Frederick the Grossa is even worse. But if you take a look at the FTG's arcs to the rear, the FTG actually has pretty darn good rear arcs. So to show you the numbers, the forward arcs of the FTG, 41 degrees. You have to show a lot of side in order to get all four turrets out. But the rear one's 144, basically the same as the Amagi. So as an FTG, you can do what the Amagi was doing in the last clip, sit in that nice angled position, and can hold a position for quite some time. While if you're trying to do offense with an FTG, you're basically going to get wrecked in even worse ways than this Amagi is, because you have to show even more side in order to bring that firepower to bear. Now with knowledge of effective armor, the auto bounce concept that I talked about in the last video, now as a battleship, if you start the game, you can take a look at the mini map, you can take a look at what kinds of situations is going on. Are you on the defensive flank? Or are you on the pushing flank? And then you can start to contribute to your team, right? If you're on the offensive side, all right, position properly, angle properly, bring all my firepower to bear, you know, let my team work over the opponent, right? while I'm in a position to bring all my firepower into that fight. If I'm playing defense, all right, I'm going to make it as difficult as is possible for the opposing team to push into me. They're going to suffer damage, they might lose ships, and I'm just going to stall, 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 stall. Because if the other side wins, then we win the game, right? By doing things correctly, you're going to contribute greatly to your team's ability to win games. And of course, that is still the ultimate goal in the World of Warships, is to win. One last little tack on kind of thing to talk about. Imagine you're in a battleship and let's say you've gotten yourself into a position where you're kind of bowing like this and suddenly you notice a big lemming train coming and you're like, oh man, that's a really, really strong push. I don't think I can hold this. But a lot of BB players you'll notice are a little bit too scared. They go, well, I'm not going to be able to turn away because if I show my side, I'm going to get deleted and then that's the end of my game. So what they do is they stay bowing until they die and they don't do much they, they're not very effective they're just getting abused so now that you know how auto bounce and effective armor works you realize or at least i hope you realize that the actual window of vulnerability for a ship is basically when you go like fully broadside like that and this window as you're turning your ship is going to last maybe what 10 15 seconds right so if you time things correctly at the right distance away when effective armor is still effective because the enemy ship's penetration haven't reached that level that they can get through your armor easily, then you're going to be able to say, all right, I'm going to watch the danger ship. Let's say that tier 10 battleship there, that's the real danger. I'm going to wait for that tier 10 battleship to not look at me because maybe I'm still angled enough. He's not interested. And maybe he's gone to target someone else. Now, as soon as he is targeting someone else, I'm going to start getting ready to move. And as soon as he fires, now I know there's going to be, let's say, another 25 seconds before he gets his shells ready to go again. Now I'm going to make the execute turn, and I'm going to turn away. 
And then by the time that enemy battleship is reloaded, I'm now back into an angled safe position. It is highly critical when you're playing the game to know when to turn away, how to turn away safely, at least to minimize as much risk as possible. Other than that, I uh, wish you the best of luck this week with these new principles. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Aside from all that, stay tuned. More episodes coming, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.